yeah, brother. You're on the Please Me Fall on YouTube channel. All right, guys, we're sprucing up the Freedom Factory on Friday. As you know, we have the 2.4 Hours Lay Mullets presented by Summer Racing. We got Kurt Busch coming. We got Alex Bowman, Haley Deegan, Brian Deegan. We got the Diesel Brothers. Just a freaking epic list of drivers. And the whole goal is to have really good racing. I don't want this race to be a demolition derby. This one is going to be about really good racing. And that's why we're actually considering changing the layout even to make it even more fun, more of a driver's race. You guys suggested that we did this a while ago. We didn't do it for the Freedom 500, but now it's 2.4 hours of mullets. We might as well spice up a little bit. So I called Alex Bowman from NASCAR. I said, what do you think about this kidney layout where basically in turn two, you dive down onto the burnout pad and then come back out on turn three. That would add a lot more turning and driver skill to the game. James and I are gonna run it really quick. Here's what a normal lap looks like. I chose a random car and I got George's. <laughs> this thing is stout, dude. Listen to this. Holy crap. what the kidney lap looks like it's definitely a lot more wear on the brakes and the front right tires but i think we got enough brakes and tire to make it through dude burnout pad is slick kidney layout if you want to see us do the normal layout since it's the 2.4 hours of lame mullets the drivers actually switch halfway through the race so we could do normal oval during the first half of the race kidney on the second half or kidney the whole way or normal the whole way i'm up for anything i think it'd be kind of fun to change the layout it's lame mullets we gotta send it so i mean let us know what you guys think in the comments below look at all of these completed race cars guys race cars pop the door on this one check that out racing seats race grip seat belts nitrous equipped 
window net, good to go. I tell you what, that layout is crazy. <laughs> it's gonna be, it's, that's a game changer for sure. I dude, I know that. That worries me on many levels, but it was also really fun on a oh, lot of levels. A, it's a blast. The burnout pad being so slick, oh, so like slippery. Whew. I don't know, dude. I, I mean, it definitely it makes it a driver's race. Yeah. What do you think about that? That's pretty spicy. Yeah, your average is like 23, 24. So it adds about three or four seconds. Yeah. Not bad though. I mean, it's it looks cool. <laughs> it looks awesome. Yeah, feels awesome. Yeah, you're sliding around on it. Imagine three or four wide trying to ball in and then out. Whew. It's gonna get risky. Yeah. The grass is gonna take a beating. I'll gra guarantee you, you that. You just cut the check now. <laughs> it's okay. We'll add it to the expense sheet. <laughs> Finishing up Crown Vix. Gotta get the inertia switch unhooked because when we learned in the first race, you get hit, and all of a sudden your Crown Vic <laughs> loses its fuel pump. So. They are finishing up the cars, guys. Ty went ahead and designed these custom seat brackets for each car. And we'll be running racing seats in all the cars this year because the stock Crown Vic seats kind of sucked and everyone kept complaining about it. So we're like, all right, we'll put some seats in the car this year. And the nitrous is done. Just got to clean up the cars, you know, take the stickers off the windows. We got logos that we put on the cars, all that stuff. And we'll have uh, freaking 20 of these things racing on Friday. You're doing an oil change on this? Dude, You're, why are you doing a oil change? What kind of, what does it, what did it do to deserve this? It gets one about every other fleet of some cars. Oh, wow. Well, it did beat George's truck, so I guess it kind of deserved all six an oil cylinders change. I found too burnt. Burn, not just, so it's burned clean through this park plug. <laughs> just hanging So I got two wires, oil change, slid my uh, collectors back together, tacked them up so this way it's uh, nice. full zoomy, not just seven zoomy. Hell yeah, back in action. Oh, brother. These turned out great. Dude, better than expected, dude. New Motion Race works side-by-side -side steering wheels or any off-roading type of steering wheel. Dude, look at that quality. Handmade. And then we got the drag wheel, the buttons with the sliders. Dude, this is light. Yeah, that's why I run them. What do you think that weighs? Less than a pound. Yeah. Less than a pound? Yeah. What? That is insane. That one's kind of heavier. I mean, that's like a normal steering wheel. It's nothing. Yeah. Can we put one of these on Sam's buffer? Like this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he just burr. Woo! Wee! Yeah, cleaner logo on there. Available right now on motionracewords.com. We got the demo one. That's the first one, dude. And then look at the felt texture, guys. This is legit stuff. You want every option. Perforated Shoe leather. buddy. Suede. Clean. Dotted leather. It's like raised dots. I on know, it's so grippy. And it's got the thumb holes. The thumb holes are really nice. So sick. All right, guys, we're gonna test out toast a little bit. We got, we got Cleese and Cars on Saturday, obviously. So we wanna make sure this thing's running right. It was sounding a little weird. As you guys know, the headers shook loose in Houston because they weren't quite mounted so great. So those shook loose and we're hoping it didn't burn up a valve or something. So we're gonna make it like a 10 or 15 second rip, check the EGTs, make sure everything seems okay so that we can run this thing on Saturday full-fledged and blow off some tires for the people. See how it does. All right, guys, I really hope Toast is running good. It's freaking crazy how well Warburg, you know, would just do burnout after burnout without any service, but we'll get this thing ironed out. Hopefully today it runs good. Here we go.
it sounded insane. <laughs> Holy crap. We have a, a leak though. Okay, the dash is for sure reading wrong. I didn't know in Houston because I thought it might have blacked out. Dash is not reading right. It's reading half the RPM. So we gotta change the settings on that. It's like pouring out of the back. All right, so we've determined it's not the rear main seal. It's actually the intake leaking a little bit. So, uh, it might be the distributor like where it went in, but it's all, oh. it's all puddled on the top. Oh, biscuits. Quite a bit of fluid. Well, that sucks. You think it might maybe coming out of the distributor? Like it's not sat in all the way, maybe? That's the yeah, that the seal broke on it or something. Ah. Hey, well, that's better than some other options that could be. All right, guys, the EGTs are good. They're all within about 10% of each other, except for cylinder four was dead before the burnout started, which may have happened on the way over here, or something like that. So that was seven cylinders uh, after about five seconds. Doesn't look like the headers came loose. I don't I see mean, uh, any residue. Five. That's good. Yeah, because when we were idling in the shop, number was five was freaking... Dude, number five is colder than number six and... It's dead even with number seven, colder than number eight. So I, I'm telling you, it's just this thing's got to be running hard to get the EGTs to even out. Overall, I give this test run a 7.3 out of 10. We have a problem to fix, but we are probably on the right track to run this thing good on Saturday. Yeah, I'd say you're definitely on to something saying that that's the leak. Above the, it's like all puddled right it's there. It's on top of the bell housing. If it's remaining, it can't get through a bell housing. Yeah. good driver you know <laughs> yeah, that's a great one i was thinking about just turning into my daily. daily i think you should it keeps you busy you won't be able to text and drive if you got to drive this i mean thing. you're managing the fuel things about to blow up the whole time the fuel shifter steering brake it running away it's fantastic <laughs> great combo all right we're crack lacking on this puppy gonna pull it all apart get down to business figure out why it's leaking all right so now that we're disassembled what we're thinking is correct yeah, it definitely was all wet around the distributor. So you think we're gonna oh. just throw a new gasket on it and hope it doesn't leak? Yeah, double up on the gasket, some clear silicone, make sure it's good and sealed. Yep. Hopefully it doesn't pressurize the uh, valley too much and push past that gasket. Yep, that's the problem. So who knows how many times that sucker was in and out of there. So a fresh gasket might do the trick. Other than that, pop the blower back on and let her rip, Chip. <laughs> 